One of the biggest things I hoped for this channel as it grew was not just the pure creation of content, but rather the cultivation of community. That's a lot of alliteration. Uh, but it is true that I really wanted to have a strong community behind my channel. A lot of what I produced was things that I wanted to make, things that I had an interest in, and those things were primarily medieval. Before this channel got renamed, it was Medieval Review. It was purely focused on things medieval. The community that grew up around this channel has that as its primary passion, and it shows so many members of this channel's community do fantastic work across many different aspects of the interest of medieval history, medieval recreation, et cetera, et cetera. And I will never discount the value of that. Um, it is the thing that I'm most appreciative of. And even though I'm, I may not be a multi-hundred thousand subscriber channel, even though I've only carved out this small little corner of the internet, it is a passionate corner. And I feel that it is my duty in many ways to help bring some exposure to people who may not get it otherwise, who may just kind of blend into the background. And that's not very fair to them because they do some amazing stuff. And it's in this context that about a year ago during a live stream building a, a Lego castle behind me, I uh, was talking to one of these community members, someone who goes by the screen name uh, Thomas D. Brion, which I might be pronouncing because I I don't speak French, but in interacting with him, he does amazing work. He was showing off some of the shields that he has crafted and created and designed, and he does it based on uh, historically accurate concepts, so he, he strives to go for historical accuracy, and in his build, he tends to try to maintain that, even though there might need to be concessions for you know modern convenience or materials available. Well, he also runs this Facebook page. It's kind of his side hustle called Teoma Shields. I might be mispronouncing that as well. Uh, that's okay, but uh, I'll make sure all these links are in the description below. But I wanted to commission him to make a shield based on my personal heraldry. And what I mean by personal heraldry is I took my family heraldry, which is basically a disembodied hand, and I combined it with a crescent moon, which represents the second born sun, and I combined that with a quasi-Italian uh, eagle design, and I made that my personal heraldry. I put that on a giant chainmail banner, and this is what I created. I was like, kind of, this is my way to identify my family heritage in the way that I wanted to. May not be historically accurate, may not be a perfect medieval recreation of it, but it's the thing that I enjoy, I appreciate. And I wanted to commission that on a shield. And so that's what I have for of you here today. An awesome heater shield with my personal heraldry on it, created by Teoma Shields. And we're going to take a look at it. As odd as it may seem, this is basically my first time doing an actual shield review. Uh, my channel has always been basically focused on the actual uh, swords and arms here, and uh, shields just have not really been a thing. And uh, I will note, uh, this is a review much more dependent on my opinion rather than expertise, although I would never even pretend to be an expert even in something like swords. Um, but here we are. And uh, there are a lot of things I didn't consider when doing a review, such as how am I actually going to display this thing while I talk about it. Thankfully, East meets West here. I have a katana vertical sword stand propping this shield up right now. Uh, yeah, I didn't really consider that. I'm not even sure how you really display a shield like this. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to really rely on my opinion here as I review this shield by Teoma. And um, what I'll say about it just from the get-go is one of, uh, I'm gonna actually go back to a, a sword notion here for a moment. Uh, a friend of mine, the first time he ever held an Albion sword, he, he kind of made the statement, you understand why people like an Albion sword and swords of very high quality. It doesn't even have to be Albion, but any of the really high-end uh, swords, you, you don't really understand the quality of it and what it means until you hold one in your hand. Visually, they're, they're great, but holding it, it feels a certain way. It's kind of like holding Excalibur or something. Like, you know it's a good sword. 
And in many ways, this is kind of how I feel about this shield. I've held other shields before, many of them bucklers, many of them synthetic bucklers, even steel bucklers for the purpose of HEMA. Uh, I've held a metal heater shield uh, that I bought a long time ago because I didn't know any better and it's kind of awful. I've held recreation replica kind of cheapo shields, Roman shields, medieval shields, shields that are made out of wood and covered in linen but are way too heavy. And uh, what I feel in holding this shield is one that I can understand how this is useful as a defensive tool, as one that you would take into battle. And uh, I will note that this, this shield that I commissioned has con some concessions. Uh, I made choices for cost reasons to kind of keep it below a certain price point. Um, I, I made those concessions to historical accuracy or to call it battle readiness, but it kind of still feels pretty battle ready. And I want to talk about how this feels because that, to me, that's one of the most important aspects. So some notes here. One is it's actually a relatively thin shield here. Um, you know, you're talking about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch thick. So that's the quarter inch thickness of, of pretty much everything, the wood and the linen applied. Of course, that is all really solidly kind of on there. There's nothing loose. The linen isn't like this free floating fabric. It has you know, all been composited together. And it is, um, it's very light. It's a lot lighter than you'd think. I haven't actually weighed it. I probably will put some weight measurements in the video, um, but it's very light. It feels very light in the hand. And that means that you have the ability to move it very easily. Uh, wow, very easily. And so if I put this, on my arm here. I'm gonna move this stand out of the way. You know, uh, I'm not wearing anything under here. It's got uh, some nice little, uh, very historically accurate um, buckle type thing. So it's not a standard metal buckle, but rather it's um, used leather thongs to kind of tie off. And I would extend the size of this in order for me to wear like a, a garment under it. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're adding like layers of gambeson and mail or something like that, you're gonna you're gonna be adding a lot of thickness to your arm. But you can see it's light enough for this entire time I've been talking to you. I'm holding my arm out. It, it's pretty light. I mean, I could I would say this would be the same thing as holding a sword by one hand and just kind of holding it out in front of you. And yes, after a while, the shoulder gets ti tired. And, and yes, I wouldn't want to hold it like this indefinitely, but it's not impossible to do. If I were to go to many of the other larger kind of heater style shields that I've held before, I couldn't do this for very long. I could probably hold this here for most of this review. Uh, I don't know what the runtime of this video is gonna be, but I'm pretty confident I could do that. And when you bring it in to yourself, then you're able to relax with it and it, it feels good. It feels like partially an extension of your arm. Set this back up for a moment. And so um, I can see how this would be useful in, in an actual fight. And, uh, I'm going to speak to the uh, the art on it in a moment because that's the thing I'm in many ways most uh, uh, impressed by, but um, the actual construction just feels very good. It, it uses, again, a, a combination of compositing. Obviously, the, the wood uh, was uh, curved. I'm not sure the exact processes that were used, um, but it was curved and then the linen applied and composited on and painted and all the rest of it. Uh, the strapping is leather, dyed leather, which was not something I was expecting, but it works really well to have that kind of green dyed leather on the back. And the padding is pretty substantial, um, e even without a, an additional gambeson or mail on my arm. I will say that, you know, this is about a half inch to an inch thick padding that when compressed, when you actually press down on it, it's not really that thick. Ultimately, it ends up being at best maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, when compressed, but that's actually a substantial amount of padding. And that means that if you were to take a hit on this shield, you're gonna save your arm a lot of pain there. I, I think to the amount of padding that you'd have uh, in a gambeson when doing something like Hema, and this is substantially more than that in, in many cases, although it is lighter and fluffier. It, it almost feels like a pillow top uh, in, in, in a sense, if you think about like a mattress, a pillow top mattress. Speaking of strapping, there's probably a few things we should note. One is um, there are these iron nails that actually hold the leather strapping in. You can see them on the front. Of course, they're painted over to match the paint job. And then in the back, when they go through the leather strap, 
they fold over. This is great. This is how it should be. Uh, this allows you to replace strapping or repair it if need be, if it's ever required. Um, and it still looks really good and it's a nice historical implementation. It's put together, it's constructed well. Uh, it's constructed so well that the many times that I have dropped it since I've received it before I've got to do this review, hasn't really shown any nick or wear on that. I'm sure that if I were to take this into uh, a form of battle, if I were to let someone even with blunts hit it, it would start to show wear. That's obvious, um, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful shield in terms of construction. And then I can talk even more so about the beauty of it in terms of design and art. Um, I am always impressed by people's artistic capabilities because I have none. I can engineer solutions all day long, but if you were to ask me to paint anything more than a single color, I'm going to fail at it. And so seeing uh, my personal heraldry come together in in uh, a slightly different artistic fashion, that's part of what I, I asked for in Commission this Shield. I said, I want you to take my heraldry and then I want you to apply a historical filter to it because I took a very modern Italian eagle and I applied it. I want you to make it mu look much more like it would if it was more historically accurate. Uh, much more of like um, what I like to call the panicked bird expression, which I have seen before. Um, and you know, the, between the, the various layers of shading that were applied on the paint job, uh, it just looks amazing. I love the way the shield looks. Uh, I'm also really appreciative of the choice of color. So uh, we went back and forth, myself and Thomas, so Thomas and Thomas, we went back and forth on uh, the color options here. And and it's really hard to do this over pictures via a Discord messaging service. Um, but yeah, he did a really good job choosing the right colors. And you know, he always came back to me and said, what do you want? Like, what do you want on the back? What color of red? And I said, I want a dark, very dark red. I want it to be muted. I don't want it to be too bright. He got the right color. It's beautiful. So the construction of this thing, the art of this thing, it's really quite amazing. Now, I... I'm going to struggle here because I don't have really anything to compare this against. Um, I, again, I don't know shields well enough. I know swords well enough to say, like, I have a baseline. I have my my Albions. I have my Windlass. You know, they, these kind of represent the, the the lower end and the upper end. And then the in-betweens have things like uh, Hanway and, and the Kingston Arms. And then higher than the mid, we would have... Um, Valiant Arms and and Christian Fletcher and and even those are getting more up and towards the Albion territory. I can do these rough equivalencies. I can't do that with a shield. I have no idea how to talk about a shield intelligently. Um, so this is kind of my my first baseline. I don't know where this stands on it. I honestly don't know. It feels like it's at the upper hand upper end. I I feel like at the price point it's at. I got a great deal. Now I'm gonna note. Hey, it, it's it's a viewer of mine. May even did me a favor. May even tried to break even on the cost here. I don't know what it would cost uh, to have this same shield made if I'm just another person asking for a commission. I would hope it'd be a, around the same thing. In fact, again, going back to the conversation, one of the things I said early on was, I want, I want to actually buy this. I want to know what the price is. I want to do what I would do if I were commissioning this and you didn't know who I was. Um, and I feel like that was a very fair, fair process. Now, the price point, it was just a little under $300 um, for this being a single person operation who spent seriously almost an entire year going back and forth with me on design. And then probably the past, I think it's probably about four months on and off working with me on the actual implementation, asking me questions, asking for guidance. And I will also note that the duration of that four month period, that's because it's over Discord. He might send me a message and it take me two weeks to reply because I just never got the chance. So um, this was a, a, a bit of a snail's pace in terms of building, but good things are worth waiting for. And um, I, I love this thing. I'm going to find a really good play, a place to display it. I, I don't know where it's going to go yet, but it's got to go somewhere. I've got my big wall of swords here. I might have to reorient it or something. I also have a place over in the corner I could display it, but that wouldn't show up on, on camera. And I, I feel like that would be a real shame. Um, so yeah, uh, that's really all I can say about this for now. I, I might, in the future, if shields become a thing that I do a lot of reviews of, 
I might end up coming back and revisiting this and trying to kind of place it in the scale of things, but um, it feels like an amazing shield. It feels great on the arm. I feel like I have a lot of movement with it. Uh, I'm not an expert in kind of early Middle Ages combat. Um, there are people who, who may know better on how to use these shields, but the way it was strapped, the way it was constructed, it was to my specifications. It made the concessions that I wanted to make. It blended historical accuracy with some modern notions, and I think that the end result is absolutely beautiful and amazing. So my personal thanks to uh, Thomas de Brion, Again, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. And uh, certainly just want to give the, the credit where credit is due in terms of the design. Custom made anything can be a real process, especially for a stickler like me who, who wants specific things. And, and honestly, uh, probably frustrating to him, I wanted him to make choices. I wanted, I wanted to give away some of the creative control to him because I wanted to see what he was capable of. Uh, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And so uh, if you are interested in these types of shields, if you want to commission one, I highly recommend going to his Facebook page at Teoma Shields. Um, I will say some of his stuff is really cool. I'm going to take a moment here at the end of this review. Dude is doing amazing work on doing some recreations of bio tapestry uh, shields. Uh, it's amazing um, to kind of bring art to life in a functional way. It's awesome. Uh, the stuff he, he works on when it's not my commission shield, it's awesome. Uh, I know it's got to be just a, a side hustle for him now, but I'm sure that there's demand for this. I'm sure the community would, would love to have a source for these types of things at a price point that is affordable and i feel like this is a very affordable price point when i look at you know i i buy the umpteenth number of swords right i have way too many and i'm going to spend another 300 dollars on another sword why wouldn't i go get a custom made shield and when you look at the stuff he's creating it certainly feels high end um so i'm really happy with it uh yeah beautiful beautiful shield Go check out Taoma Shields. I really highly recommend uh, the work that Thomas is doing over there. I hope you show him some love like he showed me some love in creating this beautiful shield. Go check it out. Taoma Shields. See you all in the next video.